update on the December SJR, SJRA board meeting for those that could not make it. So the room capacity of the SJRA board meeting uh, room is 188 and they allowed 150 residents in. So a lot of people were turned away. Uh, the facility, the side road, a lot of 105 had cars stacked up. A lot of people did get the ability to take the time and come up and fill out a card that said what their position was. Uh, but there were approximately um, 150 people in the room. Um, that was what we were told was allowed in. I would say the room was about 10 to 1 in our favor. Uh, I would say it's likely it was more like 30 to 1 showed up in our favor when you consider all the people that didn't get in. Uh, many of the residents spoke, uh, including five or six from Kingwood. Um, the room was flooded uh, with a stop the drop red shirt uh, that uh, apparently Walden had done. Um, and I just want to say thanks to Walden. I know that was an expensive thing. You know, they showed up with a bus. They had a pretty well organized effort. Uh, and I know we had called them out before in one of the other videos that we did uh, as not being a, a active participant here. But uh, they definitely showed up for the, the December meeting. Uh, the SJRA board uh, essentially was a bump on the log for this meeting. Uh, they didn't answer any questions. They didn't offer any comments. Uh, most of them just kind of sat there with a blank stare. Uh, I think someone actually caught a, a picture of Karen uh, sleeping. Uh, she's one of the uh, Kingwood-based uh, board members. So this is kind of a, a picture that someone took in the room. I just grabbed it off the uh, Facebook page, but you can see mostly red shirts. Um, there were actually several of us that uh, had a little too much girth for the shirt sizes that Walden uh, had. But, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, you can see that it's fairly heavily in our favor here in the room. So a couple of interesting things I noticed uh, just from uh, paying attention at the meeting. And one thing I noticed was that uh, Lloyd, the president, he opened the meeting and uh, he did not say we're here to talk about temporary lake lowering. He opened it and he said, we're here to talk about seasonal lake lowering. So I think they're, you know, kind of reconsidering that temporary thing, especially since we figured out they're using it as a shield and we've been really kind of throwing axes at it for the last uh, couple of months here. And, and I think it may be starting to crack. Um, the other thing that uh, I think was revealing was I think that uh, the Kingwood people actually really did themselves a, a disservice in this meeting. Um, so their new position is they want temporary to now mean until the new floodgates on Lake Houston are installed. Um, so, you know, if, if you think about why that's important, I think it does a little bit to reveal what their strategy is. You know, first thing they said was this is temporary until the dredging is done. OK, dredging is finished and we still want it to continue. What do we do? Well, let's move the the rabbit in front of the, the dogs a little bit further down the track, right? So now the next thing is, well, we want it until uh, the uh, floodgates are on Lake Houston. Well, let's say we capitulate and allow that. Well, maybe they move the rabbit a little bit further and say, well, we really want the mouth bar removed. And we think at some point we'll get some money from somebody to dredge the mouth bar, right? And I think you'll, you'll end up in a situation where they're continually moving that rabbit down the track and it may be 15, 20 years before they consider temporary not really being temporary. And if you think about all the things that are going on down there, they keep saying, well, they want more dredging. Well, you know, just so you know, there are class action lawsuits going out against just about everybody that has ever done any dredging work in any part of Houston. Um, because, you know, if you ever laid a shovel in the San Jacinto, they are now suing everybody down there. So how are you going to get people to dredge down there when it's just a you know lawsuits flying left and right? So I think that the Kingwood speakers actually did a really 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 bad job, um, you know, as opposed to our speakers who I thought we had several people that really nailed it. I mean, there were you know a handful of speakers that were just I mean just on point and, and did a really good job. Um, you know, one of their speakers was highly disrespectful. We were asked to sit. He did not sit. He got up. He, he rose his voice, you know, not in kind of a commanding, I want to get my message across position, but it was a highly aggressive tone to it. I think that came across to everybody in the room. He made some disrespectful comments like, um, you know, you should be glad that the lake is lower. It makes it easier to fix y'all's bulkheads that are, fi that are failing. 
Um, you know, he threatened another person, asked them to come out in the hall and fight with him. You know, there were a lot of things that he did that I think showed them to be, you know, kind of the, the aggressor and the, the mean person here. Another thing that, that I think they did that was horrible from a strategy standpoint was, you know, in, in this whole situation, we, we were painted as the, the boogie band, the rich people living on a lake complaining they can't get their boats out. Yet they brought speakers who lived on Lake Houston, who flooded, who then talked about the seven figure homes that they owned. And I think that came across pretty clear, you know, and I think that that is something that they did not want to flip. They want to keep painting us as the rich, bad people out here. You know, even if you look at Rehack's site, he's showing, you know, low income apartments and things like that. He's not showing mansions on Lake Houston that flooded. So I think they did a, I think that was a little bit of a strategy mistake on their part. Um, they also talked about tax revenue, which again, that plays directly to our direction, right? You know, if you think about our strategy, we have to paint it as we're getting, you know, we're getting sacrificed, you know, to borrow a word from the guy that, from Lake Paula that spoke, you know, we're getting sacrificed up here because we're a smaller group of residents, we pay less tax money, we don't pay into Houston. And he straight out came out and said it, there's a lot of tax revenue for Lake Houston down here. So, you know, he kind of played into our strategy. And then I think, um, you know, the final thing that they did that I, I didn't really agree with is, you know, you bring geologists and, you know, people down there to say, okay, here's the science, here's this, here's that. You know, now SCRA, I don't know that that was what they were looking for, right? They didn't ask us to come to bring scientific data and experts to them on the lake lowering and whether it's working. They were looking specifically for residents' comments, you know, and we had residents saying, you know, my enjoyment has been sacrificed, my grandkids can't get to the lake, you know, my dreams have been crushed. And I think that's exactly the message that they would respect from us. When you show up and you say, well, you know, this guy's a career geologist and he's going to argue my point. I don't think that's what they were looking for. And I think that was a misstep as well. Um, you know, the other thing is Bob Rehack posted a response. And, you know, sometimes you see things and you think, well, maybe he's just trying to stir people up. But I've looked through it pretty thoroughly. And I think he is actually really worried about, you know, this either regressing or completely going away. So I, I think that, you know, all in all, I think that this was a very successful meeting for us. Um, you know, and I want to thank everybody that came or tried to show up. You know, I think we had good representation out of, you know, just about all of the POAs there. Um, you know, again, you know, Walden did a, a really, really good job with those red shirts. Um, and I, I'm going to try to find out uh, if we can get a link to put on there so that uh, individuals can order it for themselves. You know, that was a very expensive thing, I'm sure, for them to do. And, uh, you know, I think it really did make a huge difference. So kind of what's next? Well, um, we've got to keep the pressure up. We can't just you know quit after this. There's two more meetings. Um, my understanding is the next one is going to be in a much larger venue. Um, we'll get some details on that, make sure everybody knows where it is uh, so that we can get everybody in there. Um, also, I'm working on uh, kind of a scorecard. Um, we're going to research each one of the individual politicians, the people involved, the board members, um, find out you know who they are, what their motivations are, who who nominated them, you know, how long their terms are. Um, and, you know, we've really got to reach that next level. If you think most of these board members also are beholden to politicians, I mean, they're basically voting the way they're told to vote. So really, when we were speaking yesterday, we were speaking through them a message that they now have to carry back to the real shot callers that are above them. Um, we've got to figure out those shot callers and how to get directly to them and make them understand. And then I think we also have to widen the message, you know, right now, this is really just kind of a Kingwood Lake Conroe message, but I think we have to push it bigger. We've got to figure out how do we make people throughout the rest of the, uh, you know, Houston area, uh, this whole area of Texas understand what's going on, because if you don't do that, we're still going to be kind of stuck in this situation where you have, you know, less lake residents, less tax revenue versus a lot of people in Kingwood, a lot of revenue in Kingwood. And, and I, I don't know that we'll ever get that uh, next tier to move unless we can get to those guys and say, look, we're going to make it known that you're sacrificing a small group of residents. 
You know, you're creating this boogeyman that gets you out of actually fixing the real problems. Um, and I think that's the next step that we have to work on. And we've already got some good traction there, but if you have anything, please let me know. And again, my email is in here. Um, contact me if you know a way to get to somebody at that next level. Um, if you have media contacts that could potentially help us, uh, you know, give us a good chance to tell our story, um, just please let me know. And uh, again, thank you guys all for coming. I know it was eight o'clock in the morning. Most of us had to get up really early to get there if you actually made it in the room. Um, and uh, I do appreciate that. The letters have certainly helped. I think that, you know, the first step and what we needed to do is really has really worked. So um, again, thank you. But uh, I'll go ahead and post some of the links. There's a full recording that someone did. I'll repost the link uh, below here. Um, and then I'll post Bob Rehack's response if you want to read it. Thank you.